On this episode of Cox Connections, they say that it's never too late to take control of your financial future. Today, we'll find out how true that is and gain a better understanding of your financial needs. Also, what is the coolest and best TV guide on the market right now? It's New Contour, and we'll find out all about it today. And Legos aren't just for little kids anymore. We'll find out how area middle school students used these building blocks to design components for naval ships today. Stay tuned, Cox Connections is next. The centers are truly designed to be homes away from home for our service members. Our goal is to help them not just get out of homelessness, but to help them to stay out of homelessness. We leveraged $44 million in financial aid and scholarships. Boys and Girls Clubs and our rallying communities so that we can ensure that our kids have a great future. Salvation Army Ray and Joan Crock Core Community Center, the phenomenal facility that will change lives. Hello and welcome to Cox Connections. I'm your host, Emma Inman, Director of Public Affairs for Cox, Virginia. For over a decade, Steve Burton, president of Equity One Inc., has been helping people in our area and across the Southeast take control of their financial future and provide a financial legacy for their families. He's here today to talk with us about retirement and building wealth. Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you. So everyone says save for retirement, but how much of our income should we really be saving? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I normally tell people 15%. Now there's been points in my life where I had a negative cash flow, so it was very difficult to do. But you start with what you can, 1%, 2%, 3%, but a 15% work your way up to that. And in the future, anytime you get a pay raise, you wanna save money. Emergency fund first, that's for emergencies like tires and water heaters and things that happen with the children. And then in your retirement accounts, you'll start saving into those next. If you're offered a 401k and an employer match, you wanna make sure you take them up on that free money, that um, tax deferred growth right there, that will help you out a long time too. But 15% is a good figure to start with. So you talked a little bit about 401ks. Should you fund a 401k or traditional IRA or Roth IRA? Some of both, some of everything. Ta uh, the IRAs and 401ks are tax deferred. So many tax people, planners, tax planners will tell you to defer the taxes today with the thought that you'll be in a lower tax bracket in the future. In a 401k, your employer gives you typically a matching contribution of four, five, six percent. It's free money. You want to fund that account take advantage of that. up until at least that amount. And it lowers your adjusted gross income. If you're making $50,000 a year and you put $5,000 into your 401k, now you're going to only pay taxes this year on $45,000. So you earn interest on the unpaid taxes as well. But in retirement, you will like the Roth IRA because that one will come out income tax free. Of course, there's no tax deduction when you're funding the Roth. So I like all those and there's that, those are for just tax purposes. Then the underlying investments is an important decision of what, what you choose as well. So let's talk a little bit about debt. Debt is traditionally considered a bad thing, but is there such a thing as good debt? Uh, and, and tell us a little bit about good debt versus bad debt. Some would say all debt is bad debt, and some people preach about that, and I understand that. But as a business owner, you know, in many cases, you wouldn't be able to open the business or continue it on going without a loan. So if the business is successful and I can use someone else's money, other people's money to create that business, increase my income, it's a good debt. A mortgage, how many people would have a home if they couldn't have a mortgage? And then uh, student loans, if I can go out and take out a student loan with reason and planning and strategic opportunities there to increase my earning power, then a student loan could be a good debt. What's a bad debt? Credit cards, uh, too much student loan debt, the wrong mortgage, buying too much house and those types of things. But people live on credit cards and as your income goes up, it's an extension of your paycheck. So you'll just throw $20, $50 and all of a sudden that credit card debt gets away from you. And if you're paying $100, $200, $300, or $1,000 a month on credit cards or car loans and you're not putting that same amount or greater into a retirement account, who are you making wealthy? So good debt, yourself. good debt is any debt will enhance your opportunity to build wealth or more income. Bad debt is anything that will take away from that. So you talked a little bit about 
mortgages. How do you decide if you should buy a home? Well, typically, you're, you go in, if you decide that you're going to purchase a house, it's going to be the single largest decision that most people will ever make. But there's no guidance, there's no counseling, there's no class in school on how to buy real estate. And as we saw in 2008, the housing bubble in 2008, that many people, it came back to haunt them through foreclosures, bankruptcies, and other things. So the bank will qualify you based on your ability to repay them. So let's assume that the bank has qualified me for a $300,000 mortgage. Most people will go out looking for a $300,000 house but perhaps I should buy a $250,000 house and save that extra few hundred dollars a month, invest it for the future. So I try to make sure that you dial it back a little bit because with interest on a traditional 30-year mortgage on an average home in Hampton Roads, you'll pay two to $300,000 in interest over, over 30 years. That's if you never refinance it. So it's a major decision what size house you buy, the monthly payment, too big a house, you can't entertain yourself, you can't educate your kids, you're constantly chasing the credit card thing, and so it's, it's a kind of a, a steamroller, a snowball effect in a negative way for you. So you need to really carefully consider the size of the home, the size of the mortgage, and make sure that it's uh, appropriate to we your can, financial means. It, it, take in, not just the granite countertops, the pool in the backyard, or whatever else it might be. It, it, you would be in, it would be into your best interest to sit down with a financial a planner, advisor, somebody in the financial services business to talk about the impact of this size house versus that size house to your cash flow and your ability to invest for the long term. So let's talk a little bit about Social Security. Everyone wants to claim their Social Security benefits, but how do you decide when to do that? Well, that's another one like the mortgages that we don't get a class on. And somebody came up to me recently after attending one of my seminars and they said, Steve, everyone before they go claim Social Security should come talk to somebody like you. And I don't claim to know everything. I do not work for Social Security. But uh, I found out that over the years that Social Security is a lot more complicated than what most people think. I used to hear claiming at 62 or 66 or even perhaps age 70. But what I came to find out that it's unique to your situation. You can't make blanket statements that you and your coworkers or your brothers and sisters, your neighbors should all claim at the same age. Uh, how long are you gonna live? Are you married? Were you married but now divorced? Uh, how long is your spouse going to live? Is there pension money? How much income are you going to need in, in retirement? There's a number of things to consider. So many things to consider. And we've sent people back to Social Security. One lady recently went from $400 a month to $1,200 a month. That doesn't happen all the time. Another couple went back in, and the wife is getting an extra $256 a month. It's better to claim Social Security correctly up front than to go back and try to fix it later on because it's not always possible. Well, it sounds like you have so much information that you could share with us. If our viewers want to learn more about how to take control of their own financial future, how can they find out more? Well, one, we have, we hold dozens of seminars, educational seminars every year at restaurants like Roos Chris and Opus 9 and Riverstone. So those seminars, they can call the office and, and register for that. We have webinars online where we have people around the country watch our college without student loans, how to pay your house off quickly and a number of other things. But our, our phone number, I can give that to you. Sure. 877-313-4080. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here with us today. I know that uh, after talking with you, I probably need to be socking a little bit more away for retirement. But thank you so much for the great information that Appreciate you shared. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Coming up, sports apps, kids zones, and features to make your TV viewing a great experience. We'll learn about New Contour, the newest TV guide. Stay tuned for more Cox Connections.